So the internet is bopping and snapping and clapping and rapping with information about the new Everest Memory Masterclass cohort. And the question on your mind is, is Nelson Dulles' course any good? Well, put simply, Nelson Dulles is a legend in the memory competitor world. He's won the USA Memory Championship a bunch of times and ranks in the top 25 globally. Nelson's also known as a mountaineer. Just about every year he's got cool posts of traveling to Everest and other mountains on his Instagram. But what you probably don't know about him is that he's a skilled university lecturer too. And when memory expertise, the mindset of an athlete, and raw teaching ability combine, you get an amazing memory improvement course. Now, although I know a fair amount of memory techniques, I learned new things from Nelson, and I had a lot of fun going through his course too. Even better, one particular aspect of my memory improved, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But just so you know, I didn't get Nelson's course for free back when he first launched it. Even though I've known Nelson for many years and probably could have asked for a comp, I bought it as a regular person. And to me, that's important for a few reasons, ranging from instilling my own desire to go through the course to get an ROI and feeling free to speak my mind about my experience as a legit course participant, which is what I'm going to do today. So if you're ready, let's dive into a bit more about Nelson himself and then the Everest Memory Masterclass. So, who is Nelson Dulles? Well, Nelson's memory competition record is impressive, and there's a full rundown on his Wikipedia profile, including the records he's broken. But how did Nelson's interest in memory start? Well, in response to seeing his grandmother's memory decline due to Alzheimer's disease, Nelson got very, very serious about working to improve his own memory and researching what the techniques are and then ultimately competing and proving the concept of just how well memory techniques work time and time again. But you know, above all, I find Nelson's charitable and educational efforts especially impressive. I've interviewed him several times on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast, and he's always dreaming up new ways to inspire people to use mnemonics. His books include Remember It and Memory Superpowers. And you know, Memory Superpowers is geared towards kids, but I find it very, very interesting as an adult myself, and there's so much to learn from it. And now, there's his Everest Memory Masterclass, which is designed as a live cohort once or twice a year. And there's a new one coming up, which is why I'm releasing this video. So there are many, many things to love about the Everest Memory Masterclass. And if I were to sum it all up in a simple statement, it's this. Nelson's very upfront about the fact that each of us need to develop our own skills and there was one skill in particular in memory that I lacked and I just followed his advice and it got better. And you know, this is so important to hear from him and to see from him how he sets up his own progress, his own journey and how he tracks it because literally no one is going to do it for you. The same way that no one could ever climb a mountain on Nelson's behalf. In other words, there are aspects to the art of memory that can only be learned by doing and with this learning requirement in mind, Nelson equips you with the materials that will help you in just about every possible regard with respect to every possible memory system that you will need to develop for yourself. And you really do need to develop them for yourself. So he gives you the ropes, the boots, the helmet, the flashlight, etc. You just need to bring yourself and your willingness to take action to the grand mountains of memory improvement. So to that end, the course includes clear and crisp descriptions of the core memory techniques you'll need to tackle any kind of information. And you get weekly assignments and these wonderful little memorize with me timed sessions where you can sit down with Nelson and put in the effort to develop your systems and to actually apply them to whatever it is you feel called to memorize. And he gives you suggested memory tasks as you develop the systems so that you can practice them. Then during the live cohorts, there are live streams where you can show up and ask questions. If you're not able to be there, as I wasn't able to be there during most of them because of my Australian time zone, you can get the replays and the replays are really cool. And you get a discussion group in Facebook. You get additional resources that you can download and instructions on using them to track your progress. There are progress tests. And then there are even detailed lessons on how to beat Nelson at a memory competition. And if that isn't enough, there are interviews with renowned memory experts 
including an interview with me about some of the things that I've done to use memory techniques for foreign language tasks, giving talks in foreign languages, giving talks in your mother tongue, etc., and some of the ways that I approach the techniques. So it's a very, very full program. And for myself, the progress tracking techniques are probably my favorite part of the Everest Memory Masterclass, and Nelson shows you how to set specific benchmarks based on your baseline and making sure that you know what your baseline is in the first place. So when I took the course, I created my own Google Drive folder as Nelson recommends and started tracking my progress with memorizing words using the International Association of Memory Software. Now, this is important because normally I memorize directly from print books. I don't very often memorize anything from screens. And if you know anything about me, I try to minimize screen time as much as possible, which is really hard for me because I do a lot of stuff on the internet and I really cherish reading and memorizing directly from books. So it's quite something that Nelson's course encouraged me to tackle something I not only dislike, but actually dread, which is memorizing from screens. So as an example, one of the things that Nelson gets you to do is answer some questions and then set up folders to track your progress based on the different information categories he teaches. And then the easiest and fastest and most convenient way, even if I don't like those ways, is to memorize the information from screens. So to take you inside just one of my folders, you can see the progress that using Nelson's approach created for me at a glance. And in just one day, I went from having tons of errors to having much fewer errors in the same allotment of time for memorizing vocabulary from screens. Now, frankly, I still find it challenging to memorize from screens. And since I carry printed books with me everywhere, I kind of don't need to memorize from screens all that often. But the proof is in the pudding, because for the purposes of learning from Nelson's course, memorizing from screens is exactly what I did. And if you track your results as I did, you'll find that a certain kind of profound magic happens for you. I think it's called the measurement effect. And, you know, I'm a little bit cautious around what is also sometimes called the tyranny of metrics. But at the end of the day, you have a hard time improving what you don't measure. And something about the measurement process itself helps create an improvement effect. And the fact of the matter is, measuring our own progress is itself a skill. And Nelson's approach to getting yourself serious gains in this area is fantastic. I love it. And I have seen ways to translate this into other areas of tracking when I'm just memorizing from books. So what about the teaching itself? Well, Nelson is an incredible teacher. He gives you multiple ways to think about the techniques and, for instance, examples of how you might use them. So you don't have to sit there and imagine how that they're going to play out. He gives you examples from his own experience, how he's used them in real time, in real life, and for studying different kinds of outcomes, like learning a language, for example, or giving a speech. Now, Nelson's also great at helping you develop the mindset needed to get out there and use mnemonics without worrying about making mistakes mistakes. Listen, a lot of people are on an everything quest. They want to know it all. They want to have a touch of the infinite information that's out there. Rest assured that if you're going to have it all, you're also going to have mistakes. So you can't allow the fear of making mistakes hold you back. So Nelson is great on giving you useful tips of getting out of your own way and removing unhelpful self-criticism or at least managing that self-criticism. Because again, if you want to have it all, Having the ability to deal with self-criticism is going to be key. And speaking of criticism, you might be wondering if I have any criticisms of the Everest Memory Masterclass. And the answer is, not really. But let me gesture at something that I think about a fair amount when it comes to online education. My favorite parts of the course are the longer videos. And there's a reason for that. I find shorter videos anywhere on the internet fairly annoying. When I'm scrolling through YouTube, if anything is less than an hour, I probably don't watch it. And I'm totally biased in this regard. It could have something to do with my age and not with digital amnesia. And I often accuse short videos of creating digital amnesia. And I just, I'm a theater guy. I don't like turning the engine on and off again. And a lot of theater people have said, you know, once you set the scene going, do everything you can to keep it going, to keep it engaging. Because every time you turn the engine off, you then have to turn it on again to get the audience motivated again. 
And I'm in my mid-40s and I grew up with detailed introductions to just about everything. Just dropping into videos without context or even university lectures without the first lecture this is very unusual for me. And most of the lectures I love to attend, they're 90 minutes long with maybe one break. And my favorite online classes, they tend to be long too. And you know, I know the world has changed. Long videos aren't for everybody, but paradoxically, there's lots and lots of videos out there that are getting longer and longer and longer, three hours, four hours, etc. And who knows? But you know what? This ultimately is not a criticism of Nelson's course, because the fact of the matter is, he follows a rule of active learning, which is that things need to be personalized and things need to have variety. And so he does have a lot of variety in the course. There are short lessons, there are long lessons, and there are long sessions and opportunities to get on live streams or watch the replays of the live streams. So I was able to ask Nelson a couple of questions in the discussion group, even though I couldn't be on any of the live sessions. And I was able to go through the replays as well. And you know, a lot of interesting points came out that I hadn't thought of before. And I'm sure that that will happen to you. So if you want the lengthy stuff, it's there for you. And the snippets and the smaller videos, well, they're just really, really dense. So I would recommend that you actually take notes by hand as you go through them, because one of the things that's very good about his teaching style is that he just gets to the point and you might not process it the first time because it seems like it's so succinct and it's just kind of, ooh, you might wanna go through the course twice is what I'm trying to suggest because sometimes that speed just makes you not really understand exactly the value of what you're experiencing. So there's really no problem in the program whatsoever. And frankly, no matter how you cut up a course, the true student's gonna go through it all anyway, and ideally twice. The true student develops patience for the many different kinds of content and presentation styles that are out there. And as a matter of fact, because there are so many different presentation styles out there, you want to practice going through as many different styles as you can so that you might develop that patience to deal with all the different kinds of books that are out there, all the different kinds of teachers and so forth. And you know, when it comes to memory training, your results are only ever going to come from partially consuming content. You're never gonna get it all from just sitting there and watching the videos and thinking about the videos and going through the lessons and downloading the materials or even filling out forms. You're gonna to need to actually go through the application of the information. The lion's share of developing your memory will come from taking action, just like climbing a mountain. You can read a book about climbing a mountain. You can watch videos about climbing a mountain, but until you go to the mountain and get your hands on the rocks, well, then you haven't started climbing mountains. And when it comes to memory techniques, there are at least three kinds of action involved in climbing the Everest of memory development. So you have to develop your systems, particularly your systems of association and memory palace systems are also systems of association. Then you need to apply those systems while learning in real time. And then you need to use some form of recall practice to instill information in long-term memory. And I'm very impressed by what Nelson has put together to help you with these systems, especially the detailed walkthroughs. And again, the longer the better. And you can join Nelson as he explains exactly how you can achieve his same memory feats in detail. And if you find it hard to settle down and focus on your own, the timed focus sessions will be a boon for you and you'll have a focused set of them to sit down with Nelson and get the implementation aspects of the course done with Nelson. It's really, really cool how he's put that together. So yes, you should take Everest Memory Masterclass. It's a great course. And frankly, if you go through everything and you take action on everything, your memory will improve. In my experience, the hardest thing for most people is setting goals for what to memorize, but Nelson has pretty much solved that problem. No, you might not want to memorize random vocabulary or digits, but the fact of the matter is, is that the world is filled with random vocabulary and digits. And if you can't remember them as they come in randomly, you're probably not going to be able to memorize them when they're packed into meaningful units, like in sentences or in strings of numbers on your credit card, etc. 
but in this program, you get the best of all possible worlds. You learn how to memorize the information coming in randomly, and you learn how to deal with it when it is packed in meaningful formations, particularly dense ones, and you'll see some very dense formations of information in the course. It's just up to you to take the steps or place your hands on the mountain face of memory, as the case may be. And on that note, I'll never forget something Nelson told me during one of our many conversations. He said that when you're climbing a mountain, you don't have to worry about the peak. The peak is there and you can reach it. Really all you have to think about is where you're going to place your hands and feet next. And when you're willing to focus just on that, you can summit the biggest mountain of them all, your mind and your memory. Now, if you're interested in joining Nelson's upcoming cohort or a future session, please use my link, magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash EMM for Everest Memory Masterclass. That's much appreciated because it supports my efforts in continuing to promote great memory improvement materials in the future and more on a little bonus that you'll enjoy in a moment. So what do you say? Are you ready to experience epic memory skills? Go ahead and visit magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash EMM. You'll be taken to the registration page. And if you miss the Everest Memory Masterclass this time around, you should find a waiting list where you can get advanced notification for the next time around. And if you get it through my link, let me know because that video where Nelson told me his advice about focusing just on the next handhold it's normally available only as an Easter egg inside of the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass. But when you join, the Everest Memory Masterclass, either during this promotion or any other that Nelson does, let me know and I will get you a copy and I'll know that you were in there because I'm in the Facebook group for the course too. So with thanks to Nelson Dellis for helping me improve my memory, for helping me improve how I teach memory techniques and joining me as a teacher through what he's contributed to this channel and to the program that I have created and just being an inspiration over the years. I also thank the channel members who support this channel and I thank everybody who has one of my books or the masterclass. I simply cannot recommend Everest Memory Masterclass highly enough. I took it myself. I enjoyed it immensely. I learned new things too. I improved my ability to deal with something that I don't like, which ultimately helped me practice slaying my own like-dislike monster so I can just get busy, get something done, and improve a particular part of my own memory skills. And as a result of having done that, I'm very confident you're going to enjoy this program too, but more than enjoy it, you're going to benefit from it. And you'll be supporting a really great teacher of memory too. In fact, I hope that Nelson will continue doing this and sharing what he knows about memory for many decades to come. So for more with Nelson, why not open that link for his Everest Memory Masterclass? And then if you want some more, why not watch my most recent interview with Nelson next here on this channel? So I'll see you in the Everest Memory Masterclass. Thank you again. And until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic. You know, when it comes to that kind of realm of experiencing uh, different environments that you could never access, I mean, that's that's one of the beautiful things about information, period, is you get to experience different worlds the more you can remember. And one of the things that I, I, I love when I saw it, because you don't see it that often, you usually see it the opposite. And I, it makes me want to pull my hair out, even though I'm not really an angry person. Um, <laughs> which is that you say, it's okay to memorize things without understanding it, because that can be the path to understanding. That's not exactly how you put it. But um, you talk about that problem of understanding and how that having it in memory can can lead to the insight that you're looking for. And I was just like, yes, thank you. Because there's so many people, uh, including other memory experts who we don't have to uh, point out uh, because they mean well. But um, they say, you know, no, no, you should understand it before you commit it to memory. So what what called you to, to make that critical point that I think you're absolutely correct? I mean, there's so many things I never would have understood if I didn't memorize it first. I just know this from my yeah. own experience. Well, I, I just come at it from the angle that like, if, I, if I'm trying to learn something, it exists outside of me, right? It's on Wikipedia, it's in a book, it's in my notes, it's on a, it's on a thing, a physical thing that is not me, right? Um, I want to get it inside of me, right? Um, in this thing, so that it is, it is a part of me and that I don't need to re rely on this outside 
thing um, to get it. So memory techniques will do that quickly. Um, and yes, you know, how does this work? Well, the techniques, you know, you're turning it into pictures that sometimes and most often don't have anything to do with what the actual information means um, or, or the deeper context of what it means. But I think that's okay because I love the idea that once I can remove it from that external device and carry it with me, I can do whatever I want with it. You know, I can just learn a little bit more about the data that I, I, I just memorized, or I can go on to master it and learn every facet of it. Um, and I have the control and I don't need to rely on a textbook anymore because it's there. Um, I don't know. I love that feeling. You know, it's like, the, the example I always give is with presidents, right? If you're learning the presidents, you know, you can come up with 45 different images for the last name of the president. And many of them will be very strange images that maybe remind you of the word or, um, you know, just our cue for the word. And it's like an object that has nothing to do with the president at all. But um, like Eisenhower, I always say the image for that should be a pair of eyeballs in a shower, eyes in the shower, right? Right. That's not Eisenhower. All the things Eisenhower did, right? Like nothing is, those eyeballs have nothing to do with that. So, but that's okay. So once I have the eyeballs in the shower, you know, in my mind, which is unforgettable, we can then talk about, you know, whatever you want. What was his first name? What were the, were the, the years that he served? What did he do notable, notably in his presidency? Um, what is he doing now? And, and who is his wife? All those kinds of things you can then add to the imagery and, and then start to have discussions about who he was and pull on those pieces of information to kind of expand your knowledge and connection of ideas about him in your brain. So I, I think deeper knowledge starts with, with, with having a good memory of, of, of the things.